Hi everybody, we're going to talk about medical uses of radioisotopes. Fascinating and wonderful part of medicine. If you're interested, this is a great field. Uh, so we can use our radioisotopes to do diagnosis. Uh, we can look at if an organ is processing correctly. Uh, one of my cute little twins, when she was little, she was only about a year old. We weren't sure if everything in her bladder was working correctly. So they had her do an iodine test to make sure that everything inside of her little bladder was working correctly. So you can make sure that an organ is processing correctly. They can also use this for the presence of a tumor to identify if the tumor is somewhere in somebody's body. An example would be a sodium iodide and the iodide is radioactive with a 131 uh, isotope. Now what's great about these or better than maybe some other radiation is that typically the half-lives are short. They're going to be days, um, sometimes even hours. So whatever is put inside of the patient is going to go away, dissipate because of half-life relatively quickly. Now in contrast to that, we have treatment. We can use radioisotopes for treatment. You've maybe heard, oh, somebody has breast cancer or melanoma cancer and they have to undergo radiation. This is what they're talking about. These are just radioisotopes again. Um, so high levels of radiation, a high radiation can kill tumor cells. An example of this would be a cobalt 60. You can focus that radiation um, and they're really careful. Often um, doctors will tattoo exactly where that radiation has to go. So it hits just those cancer cells. Um, and the one disadvantage I should say of this is that they have longer half-lives. For example, cobalt 60, I think its half-life is like 5.4 years. And so that radiation is half-life, half-life, decreasing by half, by half, by half. It takes five years for half of that radiation to leave a person's body. So you have that radiation in your body for a long time. And that can cause sickness. It's called radiation sickness. Um, my sweet sister has had to undergo radiation for cancer. Um, and the sickness is fatigue, vomiting, nausea. It's not fun, but it does kill the cancer. It does kill the cancer. Uh, now, a wonderful instrumentation that we have, they're called PET scans. And that stands for positron emission tomography. Uh, so in this, the mechanism of how it works, radio, excuse me, radio isotopes, they emit positrons. Now a positron will combine with an electron and that forms two gamma rays. And it's the gamma rays that actually scan the organs. And then we use the P, uh, P, the PET scans, excuse me, we use those for the same things um, of identifying is an organ working correctly, like in Alzheimer's patients, is their brain functioning correctly? They don't have quite as much glucose in their brain and the PET scan picks that up. And then the presence of tumors. This is a really big thing to identify where tumors are or um, cancer treatments, how they're working. Are those tumors shrinking or um, completely going away? Some examples of the radioisotopes that we use for PET scans are carbon-11, nitrogen-13, and fluorine-18. So amazing things with nuclear chemistry applied to medicine, and we call that nuclear medicine. If you're, again, if you're interested in this, it's a great field of study. Proud of you. Have a good day. Thank you.